three, two, one. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Neander Talks podcast. Today, I had a poll over on my Facebook group. Uh, we had about eight, nine messages, um, or sorry, eight or nine questions asked for me to try to answer. Again, disclaimer: I'm not a po- I'm not a professional. Um, I'm just a guy who is interested in the Neanderthals or the Neanderthals. Pronounce it however you want. I've been called out a few times recently. Um, anyway, some of these questions include cooking, tools, animal relations, bed and bedding, cave art and body decoration, travel slash transportation, and medicinal practices. I also had another question asked called, what were the types of animals Neanderthals hunted? And personally, that's the one I know the most on. So we're going to answer that. <coughs> Simple answer is everything and anything would have been on the menu pretty much. Um, Neanderthals were the top predators in their area. Uh, Just like modern humans are usually the top predators in the area. I apologize for any background noise. But um, yes, there's evidence of Neanderthals eating cave bears, lions, hyenas, uh, wolves, uh, Paleooxodon, mammoth, aurochs, bison, ibex, rabbits, fish, birds. Um, in the Gibraltar alone, we know that they've eaten, they must have eaten at least 120 bird species, including some raptors uh, and waterfowl like ducks and geese. Uh, each other occasionally, although that doesn't just because we find evidence of tool marks on them does not necessarily mean that they were eating each other, but there is some evidence of t- Neanderthal tooth marks in um, Neanderthal bones, which I believe is the El Cedron cave and, oh, oh man, what is the other one? It's a Dutch cave. I, b- I believe it's called Goyette cave. There's a Neanderthal bone with Neanderthal teeth marks into it. But to answer the question of what did the Neanderthals hunt, they hunted anything they could have. Um, I doubt that they were targeting predators specifically unless it was cave bears during the winter months or once they were just waking up. But other than that, any herbivores like horses, aurochs, bison, they would have been targeting for sure. (coughs) Excuse me. I'm just pulling up the questions again. Um... We'll talk about tools now because I know a lot about that. Uh, tools, they they had the typical Middle Paleolithic um, complex. So, Mousterian, Levois. This includes like um, the three below Levois blades, hand axes, reclores, um, lots of wooden tools and bone tools, I imagine they were using. I'm sure they made nets. I'm sure they made uh, use of travois sleds, which also sort of goes on travel slash transportation. Um, And yeah, it's really hard to say. We know for a fact that they were using stone tools and some bone tools like um, lissoirs and uh, possibly some bone spear points. I I know that the lissoirs were found in France. I cannot tell you where the bone spear points are put. Because I go into these blind and I just talk. Sorry about that pause. I accidentally clicked the button. But uh, tool use, it's, it's, it's really such a broad statement. Like uh, with lithic tools, it would be um, Levawa, Mousterian complexes. And then going into that, there's like Laquina. Uh, there's uh, the Chatel Peronian. There's... Um, Northern European complexes. There's the complexes over in Siberia with uh, which might be like hybrid Denisov and Neanderthal tools and technology coming together. It's really just it's really just it needs its own separate two hour long video to explain all that. But I imagine that they were using a lot of the same tools that Homo sapiens had access to later Homo sapiens. Um. But yeah, I imagine they were using a lot to their advantage. Anything, really. <laughs> um, 
beds and bedding is a tough one because again there's not much archaeology archaeological evidence for that um if i had to speculate and a lot of these are just speculation i imagine that they were not just sleeping on the cold ground i imagine that they would have had layers of branches like soft branches like pine or spruce or juniper or they could have cut long grasses um and just piled grasses on top of uh, where they wanted to sleep and then slipped on top of that with, if they were lucky, maybe a few deer blankets um, or like a giant rabbit blanket like like I'm making currently. And then they could have slept on that. Uh, sorry, I, I paused it by accident again. Uh, apparently, if you close Zoom, it automatically stops your recording. So that's my apologies. But um, like you see in a lot of stereotypical documentaries or older documentaries, they're always sleeping on the ground with like a one deer blanket on the ground. If you're living in the cold, and I do live in a cold country, I live in Canada, um, the ground pulls the heat out of you. So you have to make at least five inch inches of insulation in between you and the, the uh, ground or else you're going to have all the heat sucked out of you even if you have a fire right next to you um even native american tribes down in, in the southern regions of uh, the states or even mexico never slept on the ground because the, the ground just sucks the moisture out of you or the uh heat out of you sorry but um that's really as far as I can go with that. Uh, there's not, there's literally no archaeological evidence for what they were sleeping on. We can only speculate. Uh, but my speculation is they would pile grasses and branches and maybe even animal hides to get as far off the ground as they needed to. The next question was animal relations, and I'm not too sure what that means um it's a very broad question uh so if we want to talk about what kind of relationship they had with animals i'm going to guess it none uh i know that there's some who think that they might have had dogs or wolves uh as sort of partners i personally believe that maybe later they had them um but if we're talking terms like uh, clan of the cave bear when ayla brings in a injured wolf or injured rabbit or whatever i don't think that would have happened in real life but that's just my personal opinion um i can talk about a few examples like in gibraltar it appears that the neanderthals would come in they would cook they would leave and then immediately after hyenas would come in and do this so there's one example and pretty much every other example we have is just neanderthals eating animals which i guess is sort of a relationship uh it's one-sided really uh there's also evidence of again hyenas or wolves or bears killing and eating um neanderthals so it's not uh it's not all butterflies and rainbows back then they were not friends um sorry for saying i'm a lot i know it's very unprofessional Travel and transportation was asked by one person, and to quickly say it, they would have used their feet. Uh, and that's really just, that's really it. They would have walked everywhere. Uh, again, they could have used a travoy sled, which is like, uh, it's just a sled that you pull yourself. Uh, you can make smaller ones for dogs and larger ones for horses or cattle. Uh, but really, they weren't driving anywhere like Fred, Fred Flintstone and his little rock mobile. They were walking everywhere on their own two feet. God gave us two feet. Walk on them. Don't live a sedentary lifestyle. It's no good for you. But yeah, that's really the only way I can answer that. Uh, next question. I'm reading the comments, too, to see what to see if there's any answers more to what they want. Cooking. Uh, cooking. I guess I'll also add food preparation into this. Uh, they probably were smoking some meat if they had access to wood. I know me and Dr. Bisson, when he I had him on the podcast, we talked a lot about uh, they would have ate a lot of things raw or they would have air dried it like the Inuit do. Or um, 
I think it's called bitlong when you do that. When you air dry things, it's called bitlong. The Africans do it, or some Africans do it. The Inuit do it. And I wanted to try it, but it was really a, a really wet winter this year. Um, if they had fire, they could have just cooked it, roasted meat, uh, cooked it on rocks. If they had a large enough vessel, they could have boiled it with rocks, like heating up rocks and then dumping it in. They could have boiled it or maybe even like a cow's stomach, a double layered cow's stomach, maybe. Uh, they could have been using stews or making stews, sorry. Uh, maybe it's really, it's really, it's really hard to say without archaeological evidence. We know for a fact that some Neanderthal clans would have been roasting their food. Uh, we can see it from charred bones, which is the obvious answer, but I'm trying to make it a little more, give this a little thought in turn, you know? <laughs> um going into some things i learned from listening to a guy called glenn villanello who is on life below zero you can eat the pickled lichens or lichens or whatever they're called from uh, uh caribou stomachs the third stomach actually pickles the lichens um and you can eat them like a fermented salad um and that's really the only thing i could think of neanderthals doing is eating fermented animal bio uh which sounds gross but i would try it i would try anything um what else it's really all i can think of in terms of primitive cooking i know there's probably a million ways that i'm missing but i don't have that amount of knowledge on it um they could have um <clears throat> going back to glenn villanello he, uh, he mentioned that you can actually preserve meat inside the animal stomach. So if you, if you have like a loin or whatever, you can put it inside the animal lining and it will get pickled from the animal's uh, stomach bladder or stomach bio, sorry. What else? Uh, I guess that's really it for that. Uh, now, medicinal practices. This is a really difficult one to answer because, again, there's very, very little... Uh, archaeological evidence to go off of. We know that in El Cedron, a lot of the Neanderthals were at least 97% vegan or vegetarian, not vegan, sorry. They were vegetarian in the last few months of their lives, which means that they were probably struggling to survive, if, I, if we're all being honest. Um, there's evidence of Neanderthals using sphagnum moss, which is actually a antibiotic or antibacterial type of moss. If you put it on a wound, it will help to heal it a little bit. You can also make a tea from it, but I heard it can be poisonous. Um, and like most hunter-gatherer cultures today, they would have had almost all the knowledge of the local plants. Uh, I know a lot of people like to joke around and say, thank you to the ancestors who had to eat something first. And yeah, I'm sure somebody did eat it first, but I'm sure that the Neanderthals knew every single little aspect of their lives in their environment. <clears throat> they would have had knowledge on all the plants, all the fungi, um, and animal migrations, just everything they would have known. So I'm sure I can't answer these questions. I'm, I've only been doing this for eight years and I've really only focused on flint napping. Uh, I really want to branch out, but I live in a giant city. So unfortunately I can't really go to the local dog park and eat the neighbor's dog and then pick some berries. Unfortunately, that's not how the world works. <clears throat> um, there is something cool that I learned uh, reading in the Shanidar book. I believe it's called the Shanidar people. The No, it's called Shanidar, the first flower people. And it talked about how there's some evidence of grinding on one of the Neanderthal's teeth. No. Not Shanidar. Um, oh, which book is it? I'm looking over now. Sorry, guys. I'll post it down in the comments. Uh, but there's some evidence of Neanderthals maybe using uh, pine needles or pine stems or pine sticks to uh, brush their teeth. Uh, they found evidence with uh, the um, 
on their front teeth it was scraped the plaque was scraped off and recreating scientists recreating that found that it closely matches uh, pine needles being brushed against the teeth there's also another site where it appears that the neanderthal was using a bone toothpick to pick out a cavity which would have been really rare for the neanderthals um what is it called yarrow there is a lot of evidence for neanderthals using yarrow and willow bark which is the same stuff found in aspirin i believe is the natural ingredient found in aspirin uh, yarrow also helps with inflammation and is antibacterial uh, i'm sure they would have been uh, familiar with tansy which uh, can be used to uh, I might get in trouble for this, but it, tansy can be used to actually cause abortions. Uh, it does it with cows. If cow eats uh, tansy, the, the cow will go into an abortion or have an abortion by accident. Uh, but it also serves as a, it tastes like pepper and it can, um, it can be used as a seasoning. Uh, sorry to get so dark there. I know that stuff's hard for some people. Um, that's really all I can think of. Berries have a lot of vitamin C. I'm sure they knew that. They would have needed it to not get scurvy. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really all the questions. Um, if it sounds like I was rushing them, they, these questions are very simple questions. Uh, they're very broad questions too. So it's very difficult to sort of focus and think of one thing like animal relations could mean a thousand things did they have pets or were they just killing and eating the intervals oh sorry there's one more i missed cave art and body decorations um So from what little evidence we have of neanderthal cave art it seems that they were really fond of geometrical symbols uh and dots so we know that they probably really liked geometry and line work also, we can assume that from the very few art-related uh, artifacts found, like uh, the one from Unicorn Cave, the red deer toe bone that's been carved, it's very geometrical in shape. And uh, who knows what it was? There's also a few raven bones that have been carved, and they're just lines. Body art, I'm sure that they were painting themselves with maybe charcoal paste or red ochre paste. It's really hard to tell with that kind of stuff. Um, but you can also dye your skin with berries, or at least my skin, assuming Neanderthals were white. Um, you can dye your skin um, with red ochre and charcoal and berries and just many other things. But again, it's really hard, and it's mostly speculation with that question. Um and yeah, that's really going to do it. I don't really have anything to talk about with terms of uh, archaeology and all that. So this has been Nander Talks episode four. Sorry, it seems a little rushed, but I'll see you guys in the next one. If you want to help answer or ask questions, check out my Facebook group, Neanderthals and the Middle Paleolithic. My Instagram is just Neanderthal Joe. On Etsy, I'm called Neanderthal, Neanderthal Joe Shop or Neanderthal Joe Shop, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, the YouTube channel. And that's about it. I also have a, a Telegram group, but I don't, I'm not really active on that. Oh, and I just started a Discord. So join all those things if you want to ask questions or come on the podcast. I'm happy to have anyone on. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not an elitist douchebag. I don't mind having people on. But yeah, that's going to do it for everybody or for me. And uh, ask questions down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.